Hello, welcome to Rational Investing. My name is Cameron Stewart, CFA. Thank you very much for watching the channel, all the comments and subscribers. I greatly appreciate it. I've had overwhelming requests for Berkshire Hathaway. It took me a while to do a sum of parts valuation, uh, but this is where we're gonna, we're gonna go through it today and see what it's worth. But before we do that, let's review the five key attributes that we use to apply to all of our investments. Number one, top line revenue growth. You gotta have it. Number two, earnings growth needs to be there. Strong free cash flow, low debt, and a well-priced stock. And we're gonna have to make a couple modifications to that because we cannot do an EBITDA calculation for uh, Berkshire Hathaway. So our earnings metric, we're not using EBITDA, but it is growing. And a well-priced, we're gonna use an IRR method uh, for that, which I'll cover later. Stick around, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, behind me is the most recent annual report from Berkshire Hathaway. The front 12 pages of it is Mr. Buffett's annual letter to shareholders. Definitely read it. There are also books you can go buy on Amazon that will consolidate several, several years of annual shareholder letters. They are great readings. I love to read it. Uh, I suggest you absolutely do the same. Behind the letter is the actual 10K. Definitely go through and read that as well. What I wanna show you, the very first thing I look at is his long-term economic return. And you can see here, Buffett always puts forth his returns. He's got per share market value of Berkshire Hathaway here, and he's got S&P 500 with dividends included over here. And, and this is a tremendous history of his performance over the time. It's, it's basically one full eight and a half, 11 by 11 page showing his performance. And some of these numbers are amazing. I mean, some of this stuff, he's got 57% return in one year, followed by, you know, before that was 35, 29, 28, 25% return. Those are monster. And he did this many, very early on in his career. He had a very focused portfolio with a few, only a few investments over the years as he has grown having never sold anything his portfolio has widened and he gets knocked earlier later in life because his his growth rate has slowed but that's just because he's accumulated so many businesses over the lifetime what you can glean from this is that buying right early on and holding over your lifetime can yield a tremendous amount of value and i encourage you to buy right and hold forever. All right, so to do our sum of parts valuation, we need two pieces. We need free cash flow that we'll forecast and we need his equity portfolio that we're gonna forecast. And on page nine of the annual report, he does a great job laying out exactly what's in the equity portfolio. First, clearly lists all the major securities he owns and accounts for as an investment security. And it gives you the current market value, $281 billion in stock that Berkshire Hathaway owns in other companies. Notably, Apple, for example, American Express, Bank of these, these are This is stock that he owns. It doesn't come with any debt. He is simply a passive investor. Sometimes he has 10% of the company. Sometimes he has less. Most of the time he has less, but it's a stock investment. Also up here, you will see that he owns Kraft Heinz and it values his Kraft Heinz position at $11.3 billion. So we take both these numbers, 11.3 and the 281 billion, and we're gonna use that in the equity portfolio. The next piece that we need to find is the free cash flow. For the free cash flow, we're gonna go through the income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow really quickly. All right, behind me is the balance sheet. I wanna point out a couple things. His cash position, cash, cash equivalents, 2020, $44 billion, Short-term investments in U.S. Treasury securities, $90 billion. And fixed investments for maturity, $20 billion. The rest of this is his equity portfolio that we've already looked at. But I want to show you this particular cash position. And what I'm going to do, and I'm going to add back or, or, or use to net against debt, this line. This short-term investments in U.S. Treasury, this is like the excess cash that I was talking about, $90 billion. I'll leave 44 in the balance sheet to make other acquisitions to, just as a cushion to protect the business, his fortress of cash, if you will. Awesome, awesome financial position. All right, next up is the income statement. The income statement is a little tricky because, because it combines his owned operations with his equity investments. 
and you can see it right here. Investments in derivatives, gain and loss. This number, this positive and negative number, throws off the earnings. And Mr. Buffett always argues with the, with the gap, uh, saying that it should not have to be included in his financial statement because it clouds the bottom. He did not lose $22 billion this year. It's the equity value decline of his investments. But he never sold the investment. So he hasn't realized the loss, but yet the, the accounting rules force him to mark to market his equity portfolio every year and take the change in the equity portfolio and expense it on the, on the, on the income statement. And what this does is it causes wide swings in his earnings. If you take a look at earnings before income tax and equity method, you can see he's got $54 billion one year, $100 billion the next year, and essentially zero the year before that. That is swings in his equity portfolio. It is not the swing in earnings of his utility business, his insurance business, his railroad business, seized candy. That stuff remains fairly constant. So we're going to have to try to decouple this. But I did want to point that out. Also, you can see that the revenue here is growing nicely right here, total revenue. 245 billion, takes a little dip from last year, but it's up the year before. And when we go back further, you'll, it'll continue to grow. Cash flow statement, my favorite, that is earnings is up top. First, third, cash flow from operations. We're gonna pull this line. We're gonna come down and pull the cap X line, $13 billion right there. And then we're gonna pull this range basically here for the net debt. That's the borrowing and the paying down of the debt obligations. Are right, you ready to do it? Let's look at the free cash flow. Okay, here we are with our model. We're going to take a look at free cash flow and s figure out what the free cash flow, the equity is for Berkshire Hathaway. 2012, free cash flow, $20 billion. That $20 billion has grown over time to almost $40 billion in, in cash flow from operations. That is an 8% annual growth rate. Uh, next, we've got CapEx. CapEx has grown a little less than that at 4%. But what I'm keenly interested in is the margin here between cash flow from operations and CapEx. And this difference means that every year his business generates enough cash to clearly pay for all the upgrades and expansions his railroad, utility business, Geico might need to fund their own growth and to keep the lights going. Plus, there's excess money that's pushed out to the equity holders that Buffett can use to go buy stock in Apple or Exxon or wherever he wants to go. That's how this business is run. And the debt, he keeps debt very minimal, so these debt payments are small, both positive and negative, they are very low. So when I combine the two and move through, I get free cash flow to equity holders. And what you're gonna notice is it's gonna go from $12 billion to $33 billion over this nine year period of time, annual growth rate or rate of change and it's kind of a levelized 13% is the annual growth rate of that number. And that is key and that is really big. Nice to see a double digit free cash flow growth rate on already such a behemoth of a company. I also want to point out that the volatility of this is pretty big. He'll go from growing 65% to flat to losing, then a large pop again. These happen to be very close, it's kind of ironic, to, to flat, to decline, to positive. Uh, I think what's going on here is simply, they're simply saving up for a big capital investment in, like I say, a power plant. Uh, they'll make the money, they'll expend the money, and then save up again and then make another big investment. I think that's, that's the variability you're seeing. But over time, it's growing at 13%, which is what we want to see. Next, let's take a look at revenue. Revenue 2012, $161 billion, has grown to $245 billion in 2020, that's a 5% annual growth rate. If you look at change from here to here, ignoring this recent decline, the growth rate's higher, it's about 8%. Uh, so I think this recent dip is hurting them a little bit, but the general trend is definitely positive. All right, the next piece we wanna look at is debt. Debt has gone from $48 billion to $116 billion over this period of time. Excess cash, excess cash here is zero, it's not really zero. Uh, it's just only in 2015, uh, Berkshire Hathaway started breaking out kind of cash and cash equivalents for from long term or sh excuse me short term cash investments. So I'm pulling that latter line which you saw 
Uh, but there's still there's still definitely excess cash prior periods. I simply didn't pull uh, two different lines. Net debt, I'm taking ec a debt uh, minus excess cash to give me net debt. And what I've done here is I took this number divided by the cash flow of my operations we saw earlier to get a debt ratio. <clears throat> and this debt ratio is below our three times, which is what we're going to see. And most recently, with all that cash stacking in the balance sheet, it's less than one, which is fantastic. All right, next I want to summarize the equity portfolio like I showed you before, 2020 on the annual report. I'm pulling the stock portfolio, $281 billion. It's the market value of the stock. And then $11.3 billion for the Kraft Heinz. I add these two up and I get $292 billion of an equity portfolio. And we'll use this, we'll combine it with the free cash flow. We're gonna grow both of them independently and we'll take a look and see what the value is. All right, so behind me is the forecast for free cash flow to equity. And what we're doing here is I'm taking 2020's free cash flow to equity and I'm growing it at 10% to get $36 billion in free cash flow to equity. You'll re remember that their actual growth rate is much higher, 13% annualized. I'm taking a haircut down to be conservative. I'm also bringing that down over time, which I think is also conservative. So I go from $36 billion to $70 billion in a decade. I apply a 5% cash, free cash flow yield to that number. And if you recall, and a lot of other stocks that we have reviewed that are large, uh, dividend yielding kind of slower mature companies they yield around a five percent rate four to six percent range so this is very a uh, reasonable number and what i get when i divide this by this i get 1.4 trillion dollars of market cap of equity value from this free cash flow got me let's take a look at the portfolio i'll do the same thing i'll take the 281 billion dollars of equity portfolio that they have in 2020. And I'm going to grow that at 10% and that's $321 billion. And I grow it uh, over a decade to $616 billion. I got the 10% basically taking the S&P 500 return, which is around 10% historically. And I'm bringing it down over time because I think the market is very richly valued at this point. So I think it's just going to kind of underperform. And to be conservative, I brought, I continued to bring it down. But I get $616 billion. Now what I can do is I can combine the two. I can take the free cash flow equity value, $1.4 trillion in 2030. It's a decade from now. I got the equity portfolio value, $616 billion. I add the two, and I'm just shy of $2 trillion of equity value for Berkshire Hathaway. I then look at the share count, 1.5 million shares of ca uh, class A shares outstanding. I divide these two and I get a class A share value of $1.27 million per class A share equivalent. And what I mean by that is the, the, the shares outstanding on the, on the financial statement is the equivalent. So Class A shares, or you can divide class A, excuse me, multiply class A shares by 1,500, and you get the number of class B shares. Either way you can do it. It's the same number of shares that represent the entire ownership. <clears throat> That's why it's the equivalent. Uh, so then if you want to look at this in a class B case, this class B would be $849, 2,030 equity price value for Berkshire Hathaway. That is a monster, monster number. And I know everything looks like it's in millions. It's kind of tough. But this, these are these are cash flow values in millions. These are dollars in, in actual dollars. So this is $1.2 million per share, where that's $2 trillion of equity value. Let's take a look and see what this looks like in an IRR basis. Here we go. My favorite. Our investment return uh, basis. I've got the years off to the side. I've got the equity cash flow that we uh, that you saw earlier. This isn't a dividend. It's not something you're going to be able to receive. You're basically going to be yielding this as an investment and entrusting it back into Mr. Buffett's hands to reinvest and to continue to grow and to compound. So hopefully those investment those growth growth rates will be faster uh, as a result of him investing this cash flow or he buys back more shares and the share count that I use for this long-term value will be fewer share counts, so this value will go up. 
but I assume it's distributed for this analysis for the IRR. Here's your stream of cash flow. You're in at $380,000 per A share, which is right now where it is. You're out at 1.2 million. Here's your net cash. I get a 25% annualized IRR every year for a decade. Outstanding. That's essentially five times your money on a cash on cash basis. Um, and uh, and that, that is quite, quite the, the robust return for what is a conglomerate that has very little debt, one of the best managers in the world sitting at, at, at the helm, and a, a very diverse portfolio that seems to throw out a tremendous amount of cash. I like this investment an awful lot. Uh, I'm definitely going to consider adding it to my portfolio given this robust return. I don't think we've seen a number like 25% IRR for any of the stocks that we've seen here in a long time. If I put this into a IRR distribution for you, if you're looking at this video six months from now, it's not $380,000 a share, it's, it's moved up or down. What does that do to the IRR? <clears throat> here you go. Class A shares, these are in thousands of dollars. So this is $380,000 per class A share. I'm basically growing that at 10% or re we're reducing it by 10% to get a range. I take that dollar, I plug it into the formula, assume the same uh, long-term growth rate, the same uh, long-term stock price, I get a different IRR. As the stock moves north, IRR falls, right? If the stock price falls, it gets even to a better deal. But that'll give you a range of distributions. All right, so let's recap our five key attributes that we cover for all investing. Top line revenue growth, yes. Earnings growth, earnings growth is growing when you add back the equity uh, value. Strong free cash flow, absolutely. Low debt, you better believe it. And a well priced stock, yes, it is. It's not, we don't, it's, we're not using the EBITDA market multiple method. We're using the IRR method here. And we're just saying that a 25% is beating the S&P 500. It's outperforming the long term. It's definitely going to be a good, uh, well priced security. So at this channel, <clears throat> what rating we're we going to give it? We're going to give it a good, right? That's the best rating I can give. We've got good, bad, and ugly, and a meh. This is definitely a good stock to, to look at and consider to add to your portfolio. All right, my name is Cameron Stewart, CFA. This has been Rational Investing. I really appreciate all the support, the, the comments, the suggestions of what stocks to do, and the subscribers. Thank you very much for the efforts. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.